Hey everybody, it's Noel. And before I start the actual talk, I just wanted to first of all to thank you all uh, for listening to this. And I just wanted to mention that I was feeling a little bit sad and lonely not to be delivering this talk in front of a bunch of people at RailsConf. So I kind of made my own RailsConf uh, here and populated it with some of my favorite Ruby heroes. So I hope you enjoy that. And I wanted to apologize in advance for any weird audio problems or editing during this talk. Um, I'm doing the best I can. Um, thank you, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in person sometime in the near future. And now, on with the talk. I want to start with telling a little secret about somebody who's running a mentorship program, uh, which is that I really don't like the word mentor. And it took me a long time to figure out why I didn't like the word mentor, but then I realized that it always kind of reminded me of uh, this guy, uh, this is a character from the Shazam TV show of the early 70s, the mid-70s, and he is actually referred to in the show only as mentor. He does not have a name. And I realized that because of that, my association with mentor was like an old kind of weird looking guy who was always being kind of a killjoy with advice. But I think that is an incomplete vision for what a mentor is. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I think a mentor should be uh, sort of implicitly in this talk, but I, I mostly really just wanted to show the Shazam clip, so thanks for indulging that. This is Building a Mentorship Program. I'm Noel Rappin. I work for Root Insurance in based in Columbus, but I work in Chicago, and you can reach me on Twitter at Noel Rapp. That's the best place to find me. You can also find me online at noelrappin.com. Uh, I really hope that you will ask any questions or give any comments over Twitter uh, at Noel Rapp. I'd really appreciate that. Um, to give a high-level overview of what I'm going to talk about here, uh, I started a mentorship program at Root, and two, I don't really know how well it's going. It's been about three months. I know that it's going a little bit okay, but I don't have really great details on it, so this is not going to be like a scientific study or anything. Uh, but I do think I have some thoughts about what I did and what I was comfortable with doing, what I was not comfortable with doing that might help you as you try to set up a program like this at your own company. So uh, why do a mentorship program? With a lot of uh, interventions or the kinds of things that, that you try to do to fix teams or improve the way your team works, I think it's important to start with what problem you are trying to solve. Uh, so let me back up a little bit and tell you about my team at Root. Uh, Root is about five years old as an entire company it is a startup, obviously, uh, and is now uh, just under, I think, 150 engineers right now. It was about 120 when I started the mentorship program. Um, it had been growing fairly rapidly with the result that most engineers at Root uh, have been here less than two years, which means that it is a, a relatively new engineering team that doesn't have experience moving people forward uh, that said, it's a pretty strong engineering team. It's got a lot of really talented people uh, who have done a lot of really cool things. Um, one of the first things that I did when I got to Root about six months ago was I wound up interviewing a bunch of team uh, team leads. And I learned a lot of interesting stuff about the way Root works internally um, that I probably can't or shouldn't share publicly. But one of the things that caught my ear was that many of the team leads, or at least a couple of the team leads, mentioned that they had informal mentorship arrangements with uh, more junior uh, members of the Root team. And that, that was interesting to me because uh, I, I didn't, first of all, didn't know it was happening. And obviously there's evidence that a mentorship relationship is good for both sides. It's obviously good for the mentee to have access to the mentor's experience, but it is also um, good for the mentor to... Uh, be in a role of teaching and be in a role of having to articulate what they do. Uh, so looking at those mentors who you know seem to be pretty happy with how they were doing, it seemed like a mentorship program was a pretty low cost but potentially pretty high benefit way to improve uh, the way Root handled career growth. So although uh, people were pretty satisfied with the way team leads work, I think there was at the time I did this some ambiguity about the way career growth worked at root, and also sort of the general ambiguity and confusion that that often uh, newer engineers face as they try to take on more senior skills uh, and they try to find a role model to to, to help them do that. 
Uh, so in my position at Root as a person with no authority over this whatsoever, uh, I decided to start a mentorship program. The uh, senior leadership, the very senior leadership of, of Root Engineering was, was quite supportive uh, and basically gave me uh, some time to put this together, uh, which led to kind of the obvious question of like, how do you start a mentorship program, which is, is I guess, mostly what I'm going to be talking about for the rest of this. Um, there's a lot of advice online about how to be a good mentor. There's a lot of advice online about how to be a good mentee. By the way, I hate the word mentee probably even more than I dislike the word mentor, but I don't have a better word for that either. So we're going to stick with mentee here. Um, there is not a whole lot of advice about how to set up sort of a culture of mentorship or build up a, a larger mentorship program within an organization. So I, I started to think about what the goals of a mentorship program would be. And in this case, the main goal was to promote career growth among the mentees, and that would be career growth not just along the sort of root engineering career ladder, but also in the more general sense of helping them become uh, better engineers and pick up more senior engineering skills. The only real note that I got from Root Senior Engineering as I tried to set this up was that they felt fairly strongly that the primary role in the relationship should belong to the mentee, that the mentee should be responsible for setting up scheduling and, and to some extent setting the agenda and that the, they did not want to have, they wanted the mentee to sort of own the relationship and own their own learning and not have that be the mentor's responsibility. So that became a, an important goal in designing the program. And now I'm going to take a sip of water and, and regret that I did not take a picture of Lego me drinking a cup of water to uh, cover that moment. I guess I could auto edit it, auto edit it out if I chose to. Uh, so if you hear this, I didn't edit it out. Anyway, uh, the idea here was also to give mentors a chance to learn and improve communication skills. Actually, mentorship is explicitly a part of the career ladder for seniors, but there's no sort of formal or structured way for them to show that skill within Root uh, before this mentorship program. They, they did it in other ways. This was meant to be a, a sort of a, a more explicit way for them to do it. it. Also, in the long term, I wanted it to be self-sustaining. Uh, I did not want to be the blocker on the, the mentorship program in perpetuity, I wanted the sort of the mentors and the mentees together to sort of, to own the program and and how it works. So with that in mind, um, the next question was again like sort of now what? Um, the thing is that the the thing that had to be done really was to enable a set of mentor mentee matches to be created. I also not quite sure whether I prefer matching or pair for the mentor mentee relationship. Um, I'll probably go back and forth. I tend to choose match. Uh, anyway, matching the, the the concept of matching a group of people uh, really scared me. Um, I, I knew it was critical to the way the program was going to work and whether it was going to work at all. And yet, at the same time, like this sort of matchmaking is is very uncertain, um, compounded by the fact that I don't know or didn't know most of the participants. Um, the Root Engineering team is primarily based in Columbus. I work in Chicago, so I did not have day-to-day -day interactions with approximately 85 to 90% of the Root Engineers, so I, I would sort of of necessity be going off their own self-reported uh, wishes for what they wanted out of the program, for better or for worse. Um, a thing that really uh, concerned me, and I, I, didn't, I didn't and don't know what the best way to handle it, and I, I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure whether what I did is the best way to handle it, but... Uh, <laughs> handle it I did, I suppose, is the question of what to do with people who are members of underrepresented groups. Um, people in an underrepresented group often but not always uh, prefer a mentor who is of the same group and can sort of share their life experiences and, and give them a, a, a path forward that is kind of specific to the experiences of their group. Um, at the same time, I didn't want to assume that uh, person, a member of a particular underrepresented group would always want to have a mentor from that group. Uh, I didn't want to assume they never would either. And asking flat out, uh, explicitly asking flat out also seemed problematic. Um, so with that in mind, with, with, with none of the potential options looking good, um, I really thought hard about how to plan for making matches involving uh, engineers who are members of underrepresented groups. The other thing that I sort of fell back on is the idea that, especially in personnel issues, where there is uncertainty, uh, try to be as transparent as possible and make the stakes as low as possible. Those were my 
guiding principles as I put together the program and the matching process, trying to be transparent and trying to make the stakes of the match as low as possible so that people felt uh, more comfortable with it. So here's what I actually did. Uh, and, and you can you know, obviously quibble with this in many different dimensions, but here's what I did. The first step I did was I asked for mentors. I did not ask for think for mentors and mentees at the same time. Uh, I asked for the mentors first. Um, I, I, I sent out a survey for people who wanted to be mentors. Uh, I did not limit it to people of any particular level. Uh, I did limit it to, to people who were in the engineering team. Um, I asked them for a picture, which I actually wound up not using for no principled reason. It was just complicated to set up the, the image storage. Um, and I asked the mentors for uh, their level of experience, uh, how long they'd been at Root. Um, I asked them for a list of topics. I gave a, a sample list of about a dozen things that they felt that they could mentor people in. Uh, and then I asked them both a public facing, why do you want to be a mentor? And then a private facing, is there anything I should know about who you want to mentor question. Um, and so I sent that out for, gave those, gave a few days for people to apply uh, into that program. And once that was in place, only then did I ask for the mentees. And the idea here was that, again, off the principle that the mentees should be in control of this, I wanted the mentees to see the list of potential mentors when they signed up for the program. So the mentees got a similar form. Uh, I asked them the same level of experience question. Uh, I asked them the question of topics. Uh, the level of experience, by the way, was because I wanted to try to avoid, unless there was a really compelling reason uh, to do it, I wanted to avoid having a mentor that technically had less expertise than the mentee. Uh, so I asked the mentees the same experience and topic question. And again, the mentees both got a public, what are you looking for in a mentor? And then a private, what are you looking for in the mentor? The intention here, which was implicit, but not particularly explicit, uh, was that the private list would be, uh, the intention here was that the private list would be where the mentee would say, I would really prefer a mentor who has X characteristic or is a member of, of Y group. And uh, I think a, 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 a definitely non-zero number of people took advantage of that to make more specific requests. More to the point, I gave mentees the option of selecting up to three specific mentors as their first uh, choices. Um, which also gave the mentees the ability to self-select or make their intentions known or choose among criteria other than the ones that I was like offering uh, because they might know the mentees. Most of the mentors and mentees did work in the Columbus office and had much more of a chance of knowing each other so that they would be able to pick, hey, this is a person I really do get along with or this is a person who I know shares this particular interest or is a member, uh, you know, is a member of this particular uh, group. So that was the idea. Um, in the end, we wound up with 33 mentors and 41 mentees uh, with a little bit of overlap. A few people uh, requested to be both mentors and mentees, which I thought was actually great. Uh, so I think I wound up with 65 people total, something like that. And at that point, uh, I needed to match. Now, obviously, I had more mentees than mentors. Um, the mentors had been asked whether they'd be willing to handle more than one person. Um, so I used that as part of the criteria, uh, to match people. I tried to make it as transparent and sort of algorithmic as possible with the understanding that it's never going to perfectly be algorithmic. Uh, I went through the mentee forms sort of in the order they arrived. Uh, and if the mentee made a choice, they were matched with the highest available choice, uh, unless there was some reason why it didn't make sense to do so. Uh, if they didn't give a choice, I tried to use the overlapping interests and the levels and whatever to make as good a match as I could. I tried to get a mentor where the mentor was one one level up on the root ladder if possible. It was not always possible. And then I did kind of a second pass. Um, this was more or less a cleanup. Uh, some of the mentors had not been chosen. Other people had like three or four people who had picked them. And I, I tried to sort of even that out uh, as best I could. Um, tried to give the mentors who uh, who had explicitly recommended more than one, more than one mentor, the people that said they maybe want to do it, I tried to avoid it. Anyway, you, you kind of get the point. Try to give people mentors who are closer to their level. Uh, and then, uh, to that, so that, that to me covered the transparency part. I tried to give the mentees as much power as possible over the matching, and I tried to make the matching process as like transparent and, and, and clear as I felt like I could conceivably make it. 
the part where I tried to make it low stakes was that I very clearly and explicitly and repeatedly set the expectation that it is absolutely okay for either side in the relationship to end it, to end the mentor match for any reason at all. There are all kinds of relatively benign reasons why this match might not work. People might be logistically incompatible. They might be in different time zones. They might, uh, it might turn out that their interests don't actually overlap. Um, and that is, those are benign reasons. And also there are less benign reasons. You could just not like each other. There could be some other thing going on. Um, in any case, I made it clear that there was no like lengthy process to stop the relationship. You didn't have to justify it at all. You just had to say, this is not working, uh, either side. And we would attempt to repair the mentee, uh, to the best of my ability. That the goal of doing that was to try and give the mentees in particular as much control over the relationship as possible and not make people think they were being made to have a relationship with a specific person, that they could get out of it at any time with no uh, with no stigma against it. Like that is the it is an expected part of the program that these relationships will start and stop on a regular basis for any reason. We also explicitly said that at the six-month mark, which we have not reached yet, we'll explicitly ask people whether they want to keep going or, or, or scramble it up. Again, the point is to make it an explicit, like expected part of the culture of this mentorship program that these matches are temporary uh, if you need them to be. So that was that was sort of the, 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 the best that I could think up with within my own limitations as to how to make this like as fair and useful a, a relationship as possible. Uh, I published the list. I went to Columbus. I met with everybody, uh, everybody in the program, and I shared essentially what I had shared with you, what I've shared with you so far. Uh, and I made some suggestions as to how to move forward. I did not make a lot of structured suggestions. Um, I suggested a 30 to 60 minute meeting every two weeks or so as being a useful cadence. Um, and again, said that the mentee was responsible for doing that scheduling. I, I further suggested really only that the focus of the meetings be the mentee's goals for their career, for what they wanted to learn in the next six months, but that that was a, since by and large, the mentors and the mentees were not on the same team at Root, um, I tried to keep the focus of the mentor-mentee meetings away from immediate like project goals and have the focus be on the mentees' career growth goals. And I suggested a couple of activities to try and solicit uh, goals for the mentees. Um, and then basically set up a Slack channel, um, which has been pretty low energy. Uh, and then I left it alone for six weeks on the theory that, that the somewhat flawed theory that I kind of wanted to see what happened and the like specific practical problem that uh, I was busy in doing other things. Um, but I, I mostly just let these things sort of ride uh, for about six weeks. In retrospect, I kind of wish I'd been a little bit more uh, present, but I'm not sure that it made that much of a difference. Um, so you're probably curious as to what happened to the extent that I know what happened. Um, one of the interesting things that happened was that I got a lot of relatively senior people looking for mentors more than I expected, um, which which was a particularly hard to match because the number of like, very senior people who were there who were uh, able to mentor like less senior people, less senior but still pretty senior people, um, was not very high, and uh, and so that had that had both the effect of um, those people were hard to match, and it had kind of the second order effect that it it meant that the very very senior mentors in the program were mostly paired with like relatively senior people rather than relatively entry level people. Um, for better or worse, it, it, I don't I don't know whether it's better or worse. It's just kind of a thing that happened. Um, as far as the matches go, there was an initial handful of requests for changes, um, maybe four or five, less certainly less than ten. Um, most of those changes were logistical. Uh, people again, time zone incompatible. There were a couple of people who uh, there was one. There were a couple of cases where people had an existing relationship and hadn't like clearly communicated to me or, or more likely had communicated it to me, but I misinterpreted it. Um, and so there were just a, a couple of switches that I needed to make up. It was not an avalanche by any means. Um, and and they, they were all able to be accommodated. Um, after that initial flurry, I've gotten something like zero requests to change mentors. Um, 
that's honestly too few. And I suspect that what's happening is that people who the mentorships don't click are just dropping out of the program rather than requesting different mentors. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but it's, it seems, it certainly seems plausible. Um, I kind of suspect that that's what's going on. At the six week mark, I surveyed all the mentor mentorship pairs and I got 40 responses, which is about a 60% response. Um, give or take, like some people who are in multiple relationships filled them out once for each relationship and some people didn't. So there's no, it's not really clear. It was about 60%, about, about three fifths of the people replied. Um, and almost half of those people were in pairs that had met three or more times in the six weeks, which uh, meant that they had really uh, started with and had begun to follow a regular schedule, which was um, a little surprising to me that that was that high. Uh, I was, I was like, you really had to have your act together to meet three times in six weeks. Um, and I was really uh, pleased with that result. Um, a third of the relation of the rest of the respondents uh, met twice. The rest of them had met once. So even if the most pessimistic assumption is that nobody else in the program had met at all, um, that means that about half the groups were meeting regularly. Um, my initial conception was that probably about a quarter to the third groups would do that. So I, I was I was actually fairly pleased with this. Um, the comments that came in, which I'm not going to really put up because they were not uh, cleared for release. And also I would just be cherry picking them. But overall, people were, were the people who, who gave responses were, were fairly appreciative of the program. And I think in at least a couple cases, uh, anecdotally, it's been really successful in, in helping people um, uh, improve their their career growth. Uh, I've definitely had people reach out to me uh, and say that. Also, at the beginning of March, we onboarded four more pairs um, in the idea that this was a dynamic ongoing program. Uh, this was actually a little bit tricky uh, because the on, in, onboarded pairs had like fewer mentors available since we had a relative shortage of mentors. Um, but I did manage to pair all, all four of them up. I have no real sense about how those pairs are doing. Uh, because, well, then after early March came mid-March and, you know, you you kind of know what happened there. Uh, we went to 100% work at home fairly rapidly. Um, there have been a ton of surveys from Root about how that's going. And I've been a little reluctant to throw another survey at people. And we also haven't quite reached the second six-week mark to survey again. That'll actually come in a couple of days. So I don't really know uh, how many groups have kept up over the last six weeks. I know that some have. Um, I definitely know that that my groups have, uh, but I don't know about the, the program in general. And I, I just don't, I'm sorry. Um, but I, I do think a couple things to take away. Um, I, I do think overall this has been like successful. It has cost relatively little time and effort on the part of Root Engineering as an organization or individual people. And I think it has had some clear benefit, uh, at least for some of the people involved with it. So if you want to set this up in your own team, uh, I think you should think really hard about the goals of the program. Your organization's goals will probably be different from our organization's goals. Your organization's needs will probably be different from ours and, and try to define what success looks like. Um, be as thoughtful as you can about matching people up while understanding uh, that you also need to make sure that people feel like they have agency in their choices. That's really important to having the program seem effective, it feels to me. Um, yeah, so I think mentorship is an effective way to help team growth, um, and I hope that this will help you uh, allow more mentorship at your organization. Um, again, thanks for listening. I really wanted to throw a joke in here involving my infamous falling laptop video. Uh, so here it is starring Lego me in the falling laptop. Oh my. That was not good. Um, thank you all for uh, being a part of this. So uh, again, I'm Noel Rappin. Uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Noel Rapp. I really appreciate it if you would ask about this or anything else. Uh, I have a book in beta from Pragmatic called Modern Front End Development for Rails. Uh, it's about Webpacker and Stimulus and React. And we uh, it should be, as you listen to this, fairly close to coming out uh, for real. We were waiting to see what got announced at RailsConf uh, before we pushed it all the way through. Uh, there may or may so you can get it at pragprog.com slash book slash and our client. There may or may not be a 20% off with RailsConf 2020 code. Um, try it. Otherwise, watch my Twitter feed to see what the actual code is. It'll definitely be there. Um, 
And thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And I really do look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you.